Today, one of NASCAR's most significant careers ends at the Homestead Miami Speedway. Of course, I'm talking about Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s career. And today, we are going to pay tribute to Earnhardt's career by simulating his final race before he straps in for real to take his final green flag in the uh, NASCAR Cup Series. Of course, as you guys saw, uh, since the uh, Budweiser throwback scheme is not in the game as of uh, the Homestead race, we are going to take on the AC Delco throwback scheme, which uh, Dale Jr. used in uh, the Darlington throwback race. And of course, we are racing at Homestead Miami Speedway, a 25% race, a full three-stage simulation of the race that will be taking place. So let's see how far we can get up the field as Dale Earnhardt Jr. And just for fun, uh, those of you guys in the comments, pay attention to which of the uh, final four chasers are uh, ahead of each other throughout this race. I'll try to as well in my commentary, and we'll see who will theoretically win the championship as well. Here we go. All right, so coming down for the green in Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s final race. At least a simulation of it. We're already three wide on the outside. And getting up into the wall just a little bit as Derek Cope didn't give us too much room. Apparently Derek Cope, uh, a guy who was racing in the time of the uh, first Dale Earnhardt, is uh, not going to be too nice to me. And I'm very, very loose on the inside. I actually loosened the car up, and clearly I loosened it up so much that we can't really run the bottom. Uh, so we're going to try that again. We're going to run up top here because uh, with a loose race car, we kind of need to run the Kyle Larson line. By the way, I'm pretty sure Parker Kligerman watches my videos because I heard him say that uh, very phrase on the uh, on the NBC NASCAR broadcast of the uh, Xfinity Series finale. So that was just that was interesting. I was like, hmm. So uh, if uh, Parker Kligerman is watching this, uh, hi. Thanks for using my phrase. Next time, attribute your, your quotes. But anyway. We're starting to move up through the field here as uh, everybody's spreading out. I will say the AI on this track is absolutely fantastic. Um, it, this was the first track I ran at uh, when I first booted up the game, NASCAR Heat 2. And I have to say they did a really, really good job with it. As, uh, it's, you can just see how, how well the AI race here, three wide competition, everybody kind of running towards the top, but not everybody's running, running at the top. Obviously, uh, progressive banking uh, with it higher banked at the top of the track rather than at the bottom uh, creates multiple lanes of racing for uh, the stock cars. And uh, that is pretty well simulated here in NASCAR Heat 2. As we're going to work to the inside of Cole Whip, we're going to see if we can get underneath him. Yes, we can. We got a good run underneath Timmy Hill. We don't want to go too hard here because the back end will step out. I'm kind of getting used to this car, driving it so loose, and hey, it's an Earnhardt family reunion as we go around the outside of Jeffrey. Of course, he's running a Dale Sr. throwback. And of course, Dale Jr. in a Dale Jr. throwback as we just clip the wall ever so slightly. And in behind Jeffrey, again, working to the outside of him. And around him we go. So 15 laps remaining in the stage. We're going to see if we can get some stage points, even though... Honestly, stage points really don't matter <laughs> in a uh, in the final race of a chase, unless, of course, I guess uh, overall point standings. But uh, do those really matter anymore? As we work to the outside, make a little bit of contact with uh, Corey LaJoy. So that's not exactly what we wanted to be doing. Interesting that we're running a Bush Series scheme or a Bush Series throwback, and we ran into a LaJoy. That's kind of irony right there. As we work to the outside, again, the car very loose. I think I might tighten it up just a little bit to have a little more confidence in the throttle application uh, when we have our first stop of the day as we make it three wide and then underneath the Benedetto and underneath LaJoy and just work it off into turn number three. Just very easy on the throttle as the car is very, very loose at the moment. But it seems like loose is fast because we are moving up through the field. You're hitting your ball. Fairly well. And that was my best lap so far, as you heard the spotter say, as we slide it just a little bit going in. Feather it through the uh, center right of the there. corner and just make sure we don't get cut off by Ty Dillon here, which we don't. Didn't get an amazing run off of turn number two. We'll be side by side with Dillon working down into turn number three. Ooh, that's a little too low, a little too low. We need to work up the track a little bit, get 
a little bit more of that banking underneath the tires to keep the car on the straight and narrow. All right, so we're going to work up behind Paul Menard and then Danica Patrick, Excellent who's also in one of her final NASCAR starts technically in uh, this game. And now we're actually by ourselves here, so that's pretty good. We can kind of run the line we want to, which is right up next to the, uh, well, I wouldn't say right next to the wall. We're definitely not 100% uh, in the Kyle Larson line. But about a lane off of the top seems to be where this uh, old uh, Nationwide 88 wants to run. Well, we're, we're going closer to the Larson line there. And uh, there's Ryan Blaney and Paul Menard who are swapping uh, seats and sponsors and all that stuff for the next uh, NASCAR season. As we work underneath Menard and underneath David Reagan and going to try to get up to retired Patrick now. But uh, she's maintaining that position at the moment. So side by side with David Reagan we go. We're going to have to work the bottom underneath Danica. She's trying to take that lane away. Oh, we're going to be careful underneath Danica, but the car's starting to actually work better. It's a long run car as we uh, give Danica a little bit of a uh, goodbye love tap there. Yeah, the car definitely feels like it's working better on the long run. Uh, I guess it's just loose at the start, or either that or I'm just driving it better. As, uh, we got a lot of wheel spin off of the corner. I pinched it down a little too much off of turn two. So we'll just keep working behind Suarez now. Yeah, car right washed up the banking just a little bit. I was a little bit worried that Suarez was going to hit me there, or I was going to hit Suarez. I shouldn't blame Suarez for things that I'm doing badly. As we work underneath Denny Hamlin, and I uh, drove it in a little too deep, a little too deep. Almirola working to the outside. He's trying to get around me. Well, we cleared Hamlin, though, so that's good. So we can get the focus in on the Smith field here, working there. down to the inside. A little bit of contact with Almirola there. We're going to work down to the inside. And now we can power off at turn four. Let uh, the car have a little bit of its head there, which we did. I was actually going to use a little bit more racetrack, but it felt like the car finally gripped up. They're coming out of turn number uh, four, so I didn't worry too much about uh, giving it too much of uh, space there. There's an angry horde up here with Trevor Bain, Austin Dillon. I think Eric Jones is in this mix, possibly uh, Chase Elliott. So we uh, drove it in pretty deep there, starting to work the throttle up the track. A little bit of Larson line going on there. Actually, uh, considering the Xfinity race, I should uh, I should say uh, it's probably the Saddler line if I hit the wall. Uh, as we work in behind, oh, Matt Kenseth. Oh well, this is uh, oh, this is awkward. Sorry, Matt. Uh, I'm gonna have to do better in my last NASCAR race than yours. As we work by Kenseth and underneath Elliott as well. And now working down to the inside. Trevor Bain and oh we got pit stops Clint Boyer as well so what the heck okay so three laps remaining on the fuel six laps to go in stage one so we will need to pit interesting I hadn't really considered that possibility so I guess people are uh, that's weird I, I'm surprised we're gonna need to pit before the end of the first stage that is interesting well okay well we've still got three laps left to fuel how many laps are left in the stage though 14 and 19, so we're going to stay out. We're not going to go in with the rest of the field just yet. There's always a possibility that a yellow is going to come out. So Dale Earnhardt Jr. going to take the lead right across the line. The crowd goes nuts, as you would expect, if that was if this is the result of his final race. Taking the lead, at least on pit strategy, even though we were coming up to the field quite nicely. And now we're going to work down the back straightaway. We're going to slow down into turn three, obviously, because we need to slow down to make the corner, first of all. But second of all, to uh, be able to make the pit stop. Make it into the pits nice and easy. Bring it off the uh, corner. Eey. Loose, 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 loose. We managed to bring it in. Okay, so two cans of fuel, two tires, and a little bit of a wedge adjustment. I'm going to tighten up the car slightly. And when I mean slightly, I think we went up a half turn on the on the wedge. Nothing too big as the fuel is over. There's a Dale. Did you see the Dale Earnhardt 3? Did anyone else see that as we were exiting the pits? That's interesting. Has that always been there at Homestead? Well, anyway, we were leading the race. Kyle Larson has taken the lead from Kurt Busch. But Dale Earnhardt Jr. running third here in this stage. If we can get up to speed here, we might be able to chase them down before the end of the stage. 
see what the car is like in turn three. Okay, now it's pushing. So I might have tightened it up a little too much. We're gonna have to wait and see. Is Kyle Busch coming in behind us? So that means Kyle Busch is the leader in terms of the championship as we've got three laps to go in stage one. So there's a possibility we can get this stage win. Oh, as the car is very tight now, very tight. So we're gonna have to change our driving style here a little bit. Uh, as uh, we work up to speed, Kyle Busch works around. So clearly I went a little too far in the adjustment. Either that I need to adjust my racing line a little bit. Car is more stable, maybe. No, we're probably gonna have to loosen it up. Next pit stop, we're gonna have to loosen it up. We went the wrong direction on the adjustments. And that is, uh, you know, you make that mistake from time to time. Well, maybe not, let's see. Obviously, we're not going to be able to pit at the end of the stage because I think we're going to have to make another green flag stop before the end of it. Looking at it, we've got uh, 13 laps of fuel, and the first stage is 19 laps. I would imagine the second stage is around that. So everybody's going to have to make at least one more stop, probably under the green unless a yellow comes out, in which case, you know, we're not going to have to worry about it. But, yeah, that was weird about that thing at the exit of the pits with Dale Earnhardt's number three. As we really drive it off into turn one, slide the car. Yay, 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 yay. I don't know if that was good or bad. It was an interesting entry to the corner, I can tell you that. But I uh, don't know if it was necessarily the fastest. If we arc it out, try to clip the apex here. We're going to try to get around Kyle Busch. And I don't think it's going to happen. They're uh, moving much faster now as we're coming up into lap traffic as well. But it uh, doesn't matter because the stage ends, so forget that. Kyle Larson takes the stage win. We'll uh, come home in fourth. Ryan Newman will be the final of the uh, stage racers. Uh, no pit stop required. Obviously, we still got 48 laps remaining in this one. And uh, obviously, about half of that is going to be this uh, next stage. As we're about to come back to the green flag. Again, our car has not particularly got the best setup on it at the moment. But we'll give Kyle Larson a shot down here in turn one. As we are in a bush sandwich, that is uh, a little bit disappointing. And around the outside goes Stenhouse. So, oh, Kyle Bush continues to lead the chase standings, but there goes Kevin Harvick, who is chasing him hot in pursuit. The car was very loose off of turn two, and it's very loose underneath Casey Kane, so that we do not need to be underneath cars. That is clearly not going to work. Car is not working well in traffic. There's Keselowski, another one of the chasers, as well as Truex, so they're all up here in the top uh, half of the field, as you'd probably expect them to be. Okay, so we got to work the bottom now that we've got the tight nature of the car, and clearly the car will get way loosened up if we're too close to somebody stay if we low. push up into Eddie. somebody so we just need to stay to the bottom and look how much the car is pushing at the moment so not very good not very conducive to really being able to race well here we definitely went for it on the restart I wonder if I had been more conservative we would have actually been able to maintain our, maintain our position a little bit better no maybe not here we go so whoa, nope 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 Nope, 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 nope. Okay, so that is not good. The car just completely gave up on me there on the inside. It pinched it down a little too far and we fall all the way back to 30th. Eddie. So that we need a little bit less push. Look at that push. It's push into understeer. That is the worst thing it can possibly, or push into oversteer. That's the You're worst right it could there. possibly be. That is not the way you want a car handling. It's Clear not comfortable. So we're going to run higher here. But the problem is everybody else is running high on the track at the moment. So that's obviously going to make things quite difficult. Much more difficult than they need to be. If we continue to run high, ooh, that's definitely a Larson line up there. Boy, howdy. But it seems like as I tighten the car up, it loosens up the longer we run. That's very interesting. Well, regardless, oh, in behind Elliot Sadler, sliding the car so much. I have to catch it and save it off a of turn two. And here comes Dylan in behind me, pushing me down the straightaway here. So I don't know where I can run where this car is not going to step out on me. Seems like in traffic, we it just doesn't want to race at the moment. 
we're definitely much better. I wonder if it's the tires too. Let's take a look here at the tires if we can. If we have a uh, tire monitor, where is it? Okay, yeah. Whoa, yeah, 25 and 28. So clearly tire were a big, big issue. And going with two was a big mistake. I can tell you that. Two was a big mistake. In fact, I should have probably come in uh, on the stage break. Just gotten four fresh ones. Clearly the strategy to get some stage points does not pay off. And it looks like Larson is in the pits already. So with 11 laps to go in stage number two, uh, we've got Larson pitting. Wonder if that's uh, a stage strategy or if that is Larson in trouble. Considering Larson's luck, it wouldn't surprise me very much that he is not uh, going to be in contention toward the end of this race. We work off into turn number three and four. And yeah, we got way more cars coming into the pit. So people just making a state strategy. Again, there were a lot of people who pitted quite early on in the uh, in the event there. Coming to the end of the first stage. So yeah, they, I guess they would be in a lot worse fuel shape than I am. Oh, but I'm in way worse tire shape. So we're definitely coming for four when we come in. I don't care what the uh, what the damage is going to do to me track position wise, and in fact, the car ahead is pitting. I'm seriously considering uh, at the Watch end of this stage tires. pitting again for tires, uh, as long as we're not uh, off of the uh, lead lap, which I'm a little bit concerned we'll lose the lead lap, but we'll see. Everybody's starting to move to the bottom. Oh, and a yellow. That uh, that's interesting. So. Not sure if that's going to screw us or not. Got to make sure I don't run out of time here. Uh, there's 33 cars, 32 cars in the lead lap. Probably end up at the back, but whatever. Not a big deal. Four tires, fuel. Uh, we're going to loosen the car up slightly to try to get it back to where it was in the first stint of the race. So 18th, not too bad. Not too bad. Four tires and fuel, and that means we'll be able to make it to the they end of coming. stage nice number two. Here. Let's see where we end up. As we get back to racing here at the end of the stage. We've got six laps remaining. Car inside. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. That's not good. Save it, save it, save it, save it, save it. Oh, this is an Earnhardt. Well, okay. Oh, no. Oh, God. We both. Oh, no. Both. Oh, no. Oh, rip the Earnhardts. Oh, geez, Louise. That was the kind of family reunion you don't want to do. Wreck your. Uh, nephew? Isn't Jeffrey his nephew? Oh well. Um, oh, this is not what I want to do. Okay, you know what? We're going to pit again. We're going to go for foreign fuel because we're going to only lose a couple positions. Jimmy will get his lap back and in fact we're going to give Jeffrey his uh, a position ahead of us. So That's good I guess. Alright, here we go. Back to green. We've got all three championship contenders behind us. In fact, they're all a lap down. Truex, Harvick, and Bush, they're all laps behind the race. So that would, logic would dictate. No, Keselowski is as well. All four of the championship contenders are a lap down right now. And the championship right now is being determined by a race for cars laps behind the race. Unbelievable. Well, that's interesting. And it doesn't, and I would speculate that they won't be able to unlap themselves by the end of this race. All right. So this will be fun to watch, look for when we get to the end of this uh, race to see which driver who is one lap down. In fact, one of them is going to get their lap back, so this may the championship may hinge on whoever can get the lucky dog. My God, Brian France is probably going nuts right now with the implications, championship implications of the lucky dog. You better have a sponsor for the lucky dog. But look at these fresh tires. Look at these fresh tires as we work the final lap of this stage. We're not going to get up into the points, but uh, a really good run there at the end of this stage for the 88. And it seems like we finally got the balance back in this car, working with it throughout the day. And uh, obviously we had to wreck another Earnhardt to get there. So 13th. Oh boy. Do I come for tires again? We were coming so fast through the field feel like, yeah, we're going to do it again. We are going to do that again. Because I feel like that's a, this is a good option to do. Uh, and, and, you know, we can also make up. So Kyle Busch makes the free pass. So 
assuming Kyle Busch does not lose another lap. The game is at the moment predicting that Kyle Busch will be the champion by the end of the proceedings. So Jeffrey Earnhardt down to the inside of me. And here we go, back to racing again with four fresh tires. And Jeffrey Earnhardt not too pleased probably with the way I raced him. And we hit the three car as well. And getting up in the air and bringing out the yellow, thankfully. Ugh. Well, we're going to give Brad Keselowski the uh, lead lap back. But we're going to need to pit for some repairs. But hey, we'll take tires as well. And this will put us 35th. So now it's between Keselowski and Bush for the uh, championship. So two more yellow flags, and that will give uh, all, probably all four of the uh, championship contenders back on the lead lap. So clearly some Earnhardt on Earnhardt violence uh, has uh, made this race quite interesting. Uh, I wonder if that will actually happen in real life. But uh, anyway, here we go. Uh, back to racing and again right on the bottom so we've got the car to work very well on the bottom at least on fresh tires and especially compared to the rest of the field uh, their tire situation is much different as they've been out even though mostly under the yellow for quite a lot longer than I have been so here we go starting to slice and dice through the field underneath so 21 laps to go that's longer than any of the stages have been so far as we work underneath Michael McDowell, who moves up the track quite a bit. I'm actually surprised he didn't continue on the bottom lane there. Right. And now underneath retired Patrick. Working underneath Paul Menard as well. And just breathing the throttle going into the corner. A little bit of loose condition there. I, I think it drove it in a little bit too deep. Kind of chucked it in there and it stuck somehow. Now working 20 laps to go here. Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s career. Can we pull off the victory? It looks like the battle for the win is Kurt Busch and Trevor Bain at the moment. Again, the battle for the championship way back in the pack as Kyle Busch battles with Brad Keselowski. And I'm sure everybody who, uh, oh, as Trevor Bain gets up into the wall, he saves it for now, but he definitely got loose and, and parked it in the wall. I don't know if you guys saw that, but I kind of caught it late, so I didn't really get to call it out early. But, uh, yeah, Trevor Bain got loose and caught the wall briefly. Not, not a major hit, but certainly right. one that hurt his momentum there. As now it's Kurt Busch and Casey Kane racing for the win at the front of the field. Two guys who, uh, one well, one guy has a ride for next year. The other guy may or may not. We're going to have to wait and see how it all turns out as we run way too low there out of turn four. Not sure where I was going as we get behind McFlurry and Bain. Happy birthday, Trevor Bain. Well, we'll move to the inside of both of them and get around him. So now it's a battle. It's a three-way fight for the lead between Kurt Busch, Casey Kane, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Where's it going to go? And McFlurry trying to insert himself into this battle as well, but uh, I think he won't. Uh, have quite the speed through the corners. We push up a little bit and uh, kind of close to the wall there. Thankfully did not smack it. There's a car in the pits. Can't tell who it was. Looked like it was green. Possibly Corey LaJoy. Obviously we'll find out at the end of the race as we work down to the inside of Casey Kane and to the inside of Kurt Busch. And clearly there are, it's a three horse race right now but obviously Pit stops will throw a monkey wrench into this. Lap cars will certainly be a factor by the end of this, uh, especially if there is a green flag, flag pit stops. Flag. Never mind. Never mind. Uh, I thought there was going to be a green flag pit stop sequence, but apparently not. So, no repairs, two cans of fuel, four tires. We should be uh, able to maintain our position, which we are. So, here we go. Who's going to have the best run here at the end of the race as we go back to racing as we get a good restart 13 to go three wide into turn one we know we can work the bottom here and the crowd certainly going wild as Kurt Busch fights back on the outside he's got that momentum and obviously uh, it helps to have help from Casey Kane as uh, as well there goes uh, the Dondo's car around the outside right. of McFlurry. He's trying to get there. McFlurry falls back now, and now it's Casey Kane who's the threat. 
Obviously, he has no loyalty left. He wants to uh, obviously do his own thing as Hendrick has forsaken him. As we work down to the inside, really drove it in deep there. And underneath, Kurt Busch, but again, Logan classic Ryan. Homestead Racing. Uh, Bush is going to work around the outside, but we clear Kane, and that's what we needed to do. So the fight is now between Earnhardt and Bush. Bush working to the outside, right. and Dale Jr. to the inside, side by side, crowd going crazy. As Bush has the preferred high lane for that momentum off the corner. God, I hope it doesn't come down to that because Kurt Bush would have won that race if that would have been for the win. As we work down to the inside, take the lead back. Crowd probably going nuts. Yes, they are. I can hear them. And Bush still there. Kurt Bush working around the outside. And we're going to go side by side into turn three. See if we can drive it in real deep here. I think we got it. The crowd is absolutely going bananas as Dale Jr. coming off a of turn four. Ten laps to go as we cross the line. Now is Dale Jr. going to win in his send-off? All the Twitter people typing rigged in the chat right now. In fact, <laughs> uh, we'll see come the end of this race how many rigged comments there are in the comments section. Uh, but here we go. Working down into turn number three. Trying to get this win for Dale Earnhardt Jr. in his final race. Seems like at the moment the car is working beautifully. We've got nine laps remaining in this one. Kurt Busch behind, chasing down Dale Earnhardt Jr. Is it going to happen? Stenhouse, Kay McMurray, the other drivers involved in this fight at the front. But again, it's Jr. making the move down the back straightaway and starting to pull out a gap. Six tenths of a second is the gap. One second to Casey Kane and further on back, almost two seconds is the gap to McMurray. And everybody's working the top. Boy, if I was the rest of that field, I'd be starting to work the bottom unless everybody else is super, super loose. You saw when I got Jeffrey Earnhardt down to the bottom how many positions he was able to make up. So clearly the AI are fast down there if they choose to run down there. But it seems like at the moment the AI don't want to run down there. A second is now the gap. Now nine tenths to Kurt Busch. We'll see what it stretches out to as we drive it off into turn three here. Able to use all the racetrack because of course nobody's side by side with us now. It's not a battle. Uh, for position anymore, it's 1.1, 1 .1, so we put two uh, tenths of a second on Kurt Busch as we work seven laps to go. In the middle of the track this time, and starting to really pull it out of Kurt Busch there, as McFlurry still sitting in the fifth spot, now three seconds arrears of the Earnhardt train here. As we clip the outside wall a little bit, that's not what we're going to be doing, uh, but still man, maintaining the gap, 1.4 to Kurt Busch. And we're working around, once again, turn number four. And uh, we've got six laps remaining. I mean, very solid lap times at the moment. 31.2, that's right in the ballpark of what my best lap ever around this track is. And really just put the hammer down on Kurt Busch there. 1.8 seconds is now the gap. So I wonder if we are going to get up to lap traffic here. You would assume some of the, la the slower guys kind of started just a little bit ahead of the, of the uh, back of the pack because there were still uh, some of the faster guys who were lapsed down and of course all of the guys uh, who were lapsed down go to the back in NASCAR competition on the restart so they all lap guys would have been back there so the Derek Copes of the world uh, would have had to fight with them before they fell all the way to the back of the queue uh, so it may not be lapped traffic uh, that uh, we see before the end of this race 2.2 is the gap between Earnhardt and Bush at the moment. Stenhouse has moved up to third in the Roush Fenway Racing car, and he may be challenging for second here very shortly. Joey Logano has moved up to fifth, bumping McFlurry out of that contention. And the chase for the championship, who knows who's got it right now. 2.5 is the gap to Kurt Busch. Still no lap traffic on the horizon, so right now it's clear sailing for Dale Earnhardt Jr. So we work down into turns three and four. 2.7 is the gap to Kurt. 2.8 seconds. Crossing the line. Three laps remaining in this one. Three laps of Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s career. An entire career may come down to this. It's probably something that Rick Allen would say, I would imagine. Let's check the tire wear real quick. 
Uh, at the moment, everything looking good. No, nothing like the 25% tire wear we saw slightly earlier in this contest. As we work around turn four once again, the gap is almost four seconds. Two laps remaining. Is Dale Jr. going to pull this off or is NASCAR going to pull it? Oh, no! <laughs> yeah, I knew it. I called it before it happened. A BS yellow. A BS yellow has come out. We are not going to pit. We are going to keep this lead, but it's going to be a restart. Oh, what drama. Oh, what drama. Kurt Busch is going to try to steal Junior's thunder as we get back to racing. Two laps remaining in Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s career. Got to take that top lane away from Kurt Busch, at least on this restart. Seems like it's okay. Car's a little bit loose through the center. Oh, here comes the run. Couple of mean-looking Fords back there. Oh, that's contact with Kurt Busch. Here comes Busch to the outside. He's going to have a run. Working off into turn number three. To the lead goes Dale Jr. for now. Here comes Stenhouse down to the inside. <laughs> Ricky Stenhouse Jr. takes the lead. Oh, my. One okay, to go. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is going to have to fight off Ricky Stenhouse to win. Can he get there? Not yet. Not yet. Out of turn number two. Is Jr. going to get it? we got to get to the last corner here. It is going to determine... Oh my gosh, Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s final hey, race. Right he works down to the inside, using lessons learned from his father, working up Stenhouse contact. No, Stenhouse is gonna win it. Dale Jr. will come third in his final race. The storybook will get destroyed here at Homestead. All right, so let's check out that final restart, those final two laps, so dramatic. An incredibly dramatic finish here at Homestead, Miami. You can see as they work off into turn one, Dale is blocking the outside from Kurt Busch, and it's just two lanes of traffic, and the Pied Piper couldn't Pied Piper no more because, man, Ricky Stenhouse out Pied Piper Dale Jr. here. Watch this as we work off into turn three. It looks like Jr. clears Bush, but in blocking Bush, he shot Stenhouse out of a cannon and Stenhouse went around the outside. But the war was not over as Kurt Bush was all over the back of Dale Jr. working down into turn one. So this was Jr.'s chance. Work into the inside of Stenhouse. Obviously not clear. Couldn't drive it in deep enough really to get alongside him and then out of the corner. Gets up to his rear quarter panel, but not quite. Run down the back stretch in the draft, working to the outside, slicing down to the inside. Contact was made right here. Had to use him up. Tried to just get him and tried to get him loose once again, but got himself loose and actually losing second place to Kurt Busch. So the results, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. steals Dale Jr.'s thunder in the final race of his career. The championship. So Truex is back here. I don't think he was a factor, ironically. Boy, if he gets screwed out of that. Uh, looks like Kyle Busch, maybe. No, maybe it was Brad Keselowski. Hold on, let's see. No, I think Brad Keselowski takes his second championship. We'll see. Yes, beating Kyle Busch by four positions. So the game has predicted that Dale Jr. will get denied on the final lap of the, his career for his final victory. Uh, and it also predicts that Brad Keselowski will win the championship. So let me know down in the comments what you think is going to happen at Homestead Miami Speedway and what you thought of this race. And if you enjoyed content like this, be sure to subscribe because there's a lot more coming. So thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube. Enjoy Homestead, and we'll see you in the next video.